For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This was Paul. And uh, Paul had gone through many things in his ministry. And that's why out of the hardships, out of the persecution, out of uh, the calamities he had passed through, that's why he was saying that he has gone through a thorn in the flesh. Now, what is a thorn in the flesh? A thorn in the flesh is a continued, is a continuous problem or a painful experience. It is a continuous problem or a painful experience. Now, as Paul was saying, that God gave him this thorn in the flesh to avoid him from becoming conceited. Becoming considered simply means to, to have a very pride, to be of a high self-esteem. Paul was among the great apostles that he had great revelations. He wrote the, 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 the biggest part of the New Testament. He also traversed over 10,000 miles in Asia preaching the gospel. He also planted many churches. Therefore, he had so many experiences. He has so many achievements. We can call them achievements that God has made, had made him to, to, to do. In all this, he could not be considered or could, have, could not have a high, over high self-esteem. Out of the suffering of Paul, it was prophesied during his call that he, is, he will suffer. Project for last Acts number, Acts chapter 9, verse 16. Acts chapter 9. Let's start from 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument. To carry my name before the Gentiles and the kings and before the people of Israel. I'll show him how much he must suffer for my name. During his call, it was prophesied through Ananias that he's going to suffer a lot of suffering. You know, Paul had persecuted the church earlier before. He was called to, to serve the Lord. Therefore, it was prophesied that he is going to pass through many, many things. And uh, the, the, the persecutions and uh, everything was going through is uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. And when he said he had, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, "Is it second or first?" Project Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Yeah, it's Second Corinthians, not first. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. This is Paul explaining all what he had, he had gone through. He was beaten. You know, he, there was a time that he was beaten. In the book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19. He was beaten and then the people left where Paul has, had died. And then the, the people left. Only to realize that Paul woke up and the following day he was found preaching somewhere. This was God's power. 
And also it is like resurrecting him. He was stoned to death and people left that he had died. But he didn't die. Bona sifiwe. If it is some of us we go through all this. Ah, to kesema wacha tuende, to kalime. Instead ya kuhubiri, bona sifiwe. But Paul stood. Despite all the struggles, despite all the persecutions, he just stood with the gospel. Thorns can also be in our lives when the situation comes and we can wonder where is God, where is the God we have been serving? Bona sifiwe. Some hardships comes in our lives and we wonder where is this God we have been serving and seeking? Bona sifiwe. You know, the, the life of Joseph. He went through very many hardships. He is sold by his brothers. Then he is found to be a slave. After being a slave, then he, is, he goes to the prison. And then when he is in a prison, he tells someone, do not forget me when you go to the king's palace. But that man, it is as if he had first forgotten him. Until one day he remembered, oh, there was an Egyptian somewhere who interpreted our dream. One as if he were. Joseph had servant and he could ask God, where are you? I have been betrayed by my own brothers. Where are you, God? Some hardships comes to prepare us for, for greater things. And I love the Lord because he sees the, he sees the end during or before the beginning. Thorns sometimes they, they teach us. To trust in the Lord. Wanna see fury. Wale not that you have a missing mark. You could not have been praying for your academics. Wanna see fury. But right now you are in the bush tamaking, praying for this mark that you are not having. Wanna see fury. Wale not thought that you are in more university. You could not. Unetoka mo gena university inye kukaribu na kwenu geku na inda nyumbani. But now you are in the more university. God to train you to be patient. God has brought you here that you can trust him more. The, the time you lack, the time you lack, you learn to trust him also even more. Some thought comes to train us and to humble us, as Paul was saying. Look at the situation today. Like COVID-19 is all over the world. It's a thorn in the flesh in us. Bona if you look at COVID-19, it is something that ha has happened to very many people. Bwana sifiwe. Kuna watu ambao wameomba mara ya kwanza over this COVID season. Bwana sifiwe. Because they fear there's no help in hospitals. There's no help anywhere. And therefore they have seen the only place they can see the help is from the Lord. Bwana sifiwe. COVID-19 has become a thorn in our flesh. I was reading an article in Italy and very many people were throwing money along the way that this money didn't help me during because of this COVID. Because money didn't help them. Aribuni sana wa nao ingia. Sometimes you are bitter with God for the things we go through. And you wonder, am I still his child? We, we pass through many things, hardships and all those. And we wonder, is God still with us? Am I still his child? But God is always faithful. Some questions God will not answer. He will give you time to, to understand. You ask why, why was I left by so and so? He might not answer. But he give you time to understand why that happened. Uh, the Bible says, as Paul, as we read the scripture, that Paul let me send a messenger of Satan to torment him. Sometimes it may be the devil tormenting you but behind the scene, God is manifesting 
in that torment. Bona sifiwe. God is manifesting in whatever that the devil is using to torment you. Bona sifiwe. You, you can ask Job if it's the truth. Ask Job whether it's the truth. That the devil went before the Lord and he asked, he, 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 he borrowed the permission to torment Job. Bona sifiwe. But behind the scene, God was manifesting. And we can see him being blessed, the double portion. We can see Joseph, as I said. Joseph went through many things, but the long last was to prepare him to be the prime minister. Many hardships. You know, someone said that as you have a seed in you, when you have a seed in you, you have to give birth. And during giving birth, there is pain. Bona sifiwe. Therefore, you might give, you might be in pain, and it's your time to give birth to that greatness. Joseph went through hard times. It is because he had carried the seed of greatness. It is because he had carried a very big destiny in him. That's why he went through all that pain. And we can see him manifest. God's heart manifest later. This man called Job normally amazes me with how he responds to hardships. He just praises the Lord. That many people come and tell him, cast this garden, you die and live, that you may not suffer this pain. But he says, no. You can project for us Job chapter number 23, verse 15. Job 23, verse 15. No, 13, 15, sorry. 13, 15. Job chapter number 13, verse 15. This is Job who was speaking. Though he slays me, yet I will hope in him. I will, sure, I will surely defend my ways to his face. You can project New King James. This slay means to kill. And I want us to undercome a New King James. You can project King James version. Zotan is slain. It's a version that says, Though he kills me, I will trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways on him. This job was saying, after his children are, have died, after he has lost everything, you know, some people are coming, his servant were coming and telling him, Your children have died. The next one comes, You are ghetto, all of them are dead. Someone comes, your donkey, all of them are dead, born as if he were. But he says, even after all that torment in his, in his body, all that pain in him, he says this to the Lord. Yes, this is message Bible. Because even if he killed me, I would keep on hoping. I would defend my innocence to the very end, born as if he were. Mungu ata kiniuwa. I will still hope in the Lord. One as Whether you have something to eat or not, you are still trusting in the Lord. Whether you have fish or not, you still trust in the Lord. One as This is how we should respond to hardship. Whether there is whether there is the flow in your life, whether there is smoothness or roughness, we should always hope in the Lord. One as we, we, we correct our perception that we get from the pains through the word of God. The word of God is the truth. And when you go through hardship, the, the hardship tries to suggest to you something. That God has left you. That God no longer remembers you. Born as if you were. But when you read the word of God, it clears your perception on your hardship. Born as if you were. Therefore, the word of God is the only place that uh, we run to. When you read the word of God, you are encouraged. Paul requested God to remove this thorn in, the, in his flesh three times. He requested God to remove this thorn three times. And the same thing happens to Jesus Christ. The time he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed three times. That God remove this cup away from me. 
God removed this cup away from me. But God didn't, didn't remove because he had a purpose with it. He had a purpose with it. And that's why you and I, we are saved. If that cup was removed from him, then we would not be have saved. There was a missionary who went to, to, to a mission for seven days. And the time he was in the mission field, he received a, a call from home. Then, then he was told that your two children have just died. They were, the, the two children were playing in a field, and that field there was a well near it. Then the, the ball they were playing, it was falling the well. The first child went and to look whether he can remove the ball in the, in the well. And the other one went to check whether he can remove the other brother from the well. The same happened, like a drown, like a kufa. Now this missionary was preaching the gospel and he was received a call and he was told that your two sons have just died. Then he went home and he was so angry with God. And he went locked his door and prayed and fasted. And the, the prayer was, God, where were you when my children were being drowned? Where were you? I was, I was busy serving you in the missionary field. And yet you cannot protect my, my children. Where were you when my children were drowned? After many days of prayer, God decided to respond. And he said, I was where I was when my son was dying for you. I was where I was when Jesus, my son, was dying for you. Some questions we ask God, God can, can choose to answer. And he will answer according to his will. This is the man who was busy serving the Lord and preaching the gospel. But he received a message from home to be told that there is, there is uh, a loss in his life. Bonus God is still where he was when Jesus was dying for you. Even the hard times you are passing through, God is still reigning. Bonus God gave Paul two responses. According to the thorn, his thorn in the flesh. The responses, which can also be our response to whatever you are passing through. Let me check which verse. Yes, verse 9. You can project for us. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And then he said to me, my grace is sufficient, my, my grace is enough, this message Bible. Then he said to me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. That was God's first response of, the, of his dawn. My grace is sufficient for you. Whether there is hardship, just know that God's grace is God's grace is sufficient in our life. Born as if The other one, God responded is, God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. You can project NIV kindly. NIV. Yes, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weaknesses. Born as if God's power is made manifest in your weaknesses. God's power is made manifest in your hardship. Born as if You know, Paul was one, one time by a prophet. He was, so, he was told, when you go to Jerusalem, you will be bound. Utafungwa. Born as if but Paul knew God's grace is sufficient and the power of God is made perfect. And he said, even if I will go to be killed, 
I'll just go preach the gospel for the Lord. Born as a fear. There was Paul who had, who, who had gotten the revelation that God's grace is sufficient to him and, his, and God's power is made perfect in our weaknesses. Born as a fear. That's why in the verse 10, he says a very good response. You can go to the next verse. He gives a very good response after this deep revelation of God. But that's why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. One as if you will. Paul changes the, the attitude of our persecution. Paul changes the attitude of our, the insults and weaknesses. And then he says, that I delight in them, one as a fear, because you have gotten this revelation. And uh, as we are talking about weaknesses, there's a difference between weaknesses and wickedness. Is yes, I like Bona said, you can tell us what's the difference between weakness and wickedness. It's a Bible class, I have right to ask questions. It's called a class, it's called a class. Give him a microphone, come and come. Tell us what's the difference between weakness and wickedness. You cannot confuse between the two. There is a very big difference. In a fine, huh? Can you give him and he tell us what's the difference? Praise the Lord. Uh, the difference between weakness and wickedness, according to my own personal view, weakness is uh, that thing that you are unable to do and uh, you don't have the strength to do it. Wickedness, it is an evil thing that uh, you can avoid doing. That is according to my own Thank you, thank you so much. Weakness is not a willing flesh sin. One as a feeling. Don't say I have a weakness of, a, of cohabiting. That's not weakness, it's a wickedness. One as a feeling. I have a weakness of sexual immorality. That's a wickedness. And if you are suffering, if you have, you call this weakness, it's not a weakness, it's a wickedness. And you need Jesus Christ. Born as a fear. We should know, as Paul was saying about weaknesses, we should not confuse between the two. There's a very big difference between weakness and wickedness. That's why the Bible says, that we confess the sin to one another. There are some sins you, you need to confess. That we may help her. You, that a brother or a sister can help you to, to solve them. Bona There are some sins that are, you need a brother to walk with. You need a sister to walk with. To avoid them. Bona Some wickedness. You cannot solve them alone. Bona You need someone to walk with. So don't confuse weakness and wickedness as we are talking. Weakness is not a character flaws. Flaws are F L A W S. It's not a character flaws. Character is not received by interpretation, but it is developed. One as a feeling. Character, even if a man of God full of character can, can come and lay hands on you, you cannot get that character. Character is developed each and every day. One as a feeling. You know, when, when you're, 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 you have these uh, character flaws, you need to go closer to God. God is our maker. God is the one who made us. And if you know the, the maker loves, okay, if I invent a car, I know that car more than the car know itself. Therefore, God know us better more than we know ourselves. One as a few ways. God can know our weaknesses. And that's why when you move closer to him, Takwambia, say you are so impatient. And then you electrify in your impatient. You work on that character. He will tell you, Paul, you have a hatred heart. Then when you are told that one, you, you change your hatred heart. You'll be told patient, you have a lying tongue. Then we are told that character flow. You try to electrify it. Born as a feeling. In recognizing, in recognizing our weaknesses, it drives you to God. Because you desire 
to move closer to God so that he can help you to deal with that character flaw. When we are in weaknesses, your spirit is broken. When you are in weaknesses, your spirit is broken. And there's, some, there's, no, there's nothing that God loves like a broken spirit. You know, if you have a broken spirit, that's the time you come and say, God, I need your help. God, I cannot deal with this. And Lord, I just need you. I only need you. And that's what God loves. That's why the book of Psalms 34 verse 18. Psalms 34 verse 18. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. And save those who are crushed in spirit. God is close to those who are broken. If God points out that you have a, a lying tongue. And then your heart, your spirit is broken. Or your heart is broken. Then you will move you closer to God. Because God will desire to move closer to you. And deal with you. Bona sifiri. I want us to think some of the weaknesses in a Christian life. Number one, number one is physical ailments. Physical ailments. It can be a weakness. And this one is manifest in the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 23. Timothy was suffering through a disease. And the Bible says that it was a frequent ailment. And this is a verse that the people who love to, who, who, who can, second, is it second or first? Five, ten, three. Yes. Stop drinking only water and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent ailment, illness. This Timothy, who was, this Paul was telling Timothy to take, to take a little wine because of his uh, stomach and frequent ailment. These were one of our weaknesses that are, uh, Timothy was passing through physical ailments. These are verses that is uh, the people who want to justify themselves to be drunk at. They normally defend themselves. But this one is uh, it was for the sake of his ailment. There was a man who was called John Stott. This man went to preach in a university in Sydney, Australia. This man, after the, the, the last day he was the one to preach the gospel. And then he suffered an ailment and he could not speak. His voice was not coming out. Or rather, he could, he could not, the voice could not be heard. And he just prayed to God, the Lord, this is my weakness of this ailment. But Lord, I know you will use it to manifest your power. This man took the microphone and preached when whispering. And he said that this, that, that meeting had the highest number of souls he has ever seen in a single meeting that he preached. God manifested in his weakness of ailments that he could not speak and, he, and God's power was seen. Number two, weakness is a physical, uh, no sorry, financial constraints. Financial constraints. Yes, you desire to give to God, but you have nothing to give. Yes, you desire to go for a mission, but you don't have. Bona This was Paul who, who was saying that he, he has nothing. He had, he had suffered, even he, he relied on, a, on some churches to fund him. But there's a time he, he did not go. He wanted, you know, the Spirit of God told him, you are going to preach to Rome. But he didn't know how he would go to Rome to preach the gospel. But this Paul, he was jailed. And then when he was jailed, God's word, God's word had to be made manifest. And then when he was jailed, he was deported to Rome. And he preached the gospel there. It is God's ways of doing things. We might suffer the financial constraints. But God, in those weaknesses, you know the Bible says that 
do not come to the house of the Lord empty hearted wengine tunakosa and uh, you know the, the funny thing is that some people cheat they have put something in the basket nachukua nafanya hivi but in the real sense hakuna so let us not be ashamed if it's a, you know you don't have it it can be a weakness to you but trust in the Lord in the weaknesses God's God's grace is sufficient and the power of God is made manifest. And number 3 is emotional weaknesses. Some people struggle with their physical emotions, but God understands them all. After prophet Elijah Spirit had a spiritual my time is much gone maisha but i'm concluding uh, after great victories after over the prophet of baal this mighty man of god had to run away after his life he had feared so much because of this Jezebel and he ran away and he was so desperate until he said in the book of first kings chapter number 19 verse 4 that i had enough i had enough lord he said take my life i am not better than my ancestors born as if you this prophet was full of fear he was full of fear but god indeed was still with him born as if you when if you suffer any kind of emotional uh, weaknesses god still strengthen us you can project for us Psalms chapter number 6 verse 2 as I conclude Psalms chapter number 6 verse 2 We can read together Be merciful to me for I am faith O Lord Amen let us pray Father we give you praise we thank you We adore you for your faithfulness thank you for your thought us about the thorn and awakeness is my father i pray the lord god almighty whatever you might be dreaming whatever you might be struggling with law may you help us king in glory thank you because your grace is sufficient and your power is made manifest in us in jesus name we pray